Hey everyone, Emily D'Angelo here with the Balancing Act of Life on TLB TV. Today's episode, kind of a little bit different, and you're going to be wondering why did I take the time to shoot video while I was on a uh, semi-vacation with my family. Well, there's a couple of reasons, because one of the things is Balancing Act of Life goes along with the pH healthy lifestyle because I'm also the pH healthy gal. And um, I just thought that it would be a, a good thing to show you what, what I tried to do with the, in balancing my life. I always say to um, learn something new. Take the time to be with those that you love. Balancing your life but also take the time to interact with them and, um, you know, be a part and listen to them. And the other, other thing is, is I'm, I really find great appreciation when I learn things from history and from the past of how we evolved and where we evolved from. And I found a lot of different things in Bethlehem, um, from the streets and the buildings from back in the 1700s to the magnificent um, steel st stacks and, and you know, how our lives were and what we depended on as far as the economy to a, a technique of glass blowing, which we actually did a class of. And that, that's way back from, I think, you know, uh, BC times. Um, so... You know, it's it's something that I really wanted to share and show how you can incorporate on a simple two two day uh, venture here many things to balance your life and really um, get back in contact with those you love, learn something new, try something new, and be grateful from where we've come from. So, with all that said and done, I'm just going to show you a bunch of video that I filmed. I'm hoping it's of good quality and I'll tell you a little bit along the way. I'm not going to be a history tour guide here because I'm not. Um, we have the steel stacks that I'll be showing you in the area around it. A little bit of the history that I learned. We went on a tour um, through the town of Bethlehem for some of the um, stories and um, the buildings are absolutely incredible. We went through a graveyard. So I'll take you through these with just, you know, a small amount of information. But I hope you enjoy it and understand what I'm truly trying to, you know, get through to everyone about balancing their life and living their life in a balanced manner. And just taking the time out because, um, true story, when I got, you know, the cancer and really got smashed in the face and stopped in my tracks. It, it just the other day occurred to me even again that, you know, thank God, God took the time out to stop me because I wasn't living life. I wasn't enjoying it. I was a friggin' hamster in the wheel and you know, trying to get business going and it, 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 it. And, you know, I'm still very passionate and dedicated to my, to business and, but I'm balanced now. And I take the time to see the smiles and to listen to somebody who's talking to me and to learn something new and to be involved and being in the moment. And um, I'm very thankful to have learned that lesson through the journey that I've gone through. So a lot of the things that I put out there really are for you to understand and learn that you can't keep going at the pace that you're going if you are. Or if you have things that are sitting on the back burner that you're choosing not to deal with, they're only going to get worse. You have to take things head on. And if you don't understand and get yourself educated on it and handle it and make your life a balanced one, one that you enjoy, one that you're a part of, one that you're living in a moment of. So uh, with that said, 
I hope you enjoy this. Again, I'm an amateur and I might mess up on some things. My video might not be the top quality, but it comes with the deepest um, gratitude. And I enjoy being with my family, my son, learning something new. The people up in Bethlehem were absolutely fun and phenomenal. So uh, I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. And if you can get up there, I think you'll enjoy it as well. So thank you. And um, let me get on to the rest of this. So when we first started out in our, uh, you know, our journey in here in Bethlehem, Bethlehem Steel was the big um, livelihood of the community when, you know, things were booming and the economy was good. And um, you'll see that as we travel along in the streets here, what I try to do is show you all the different, I guess the, the buildings, the factories, the stacks that are still standing. And it was pretty cool because you'll see as I'm going along in the video, and I'm not doing a play-by-play -play as you can see here, in the streets, they've taken the gears and they made decorations out of so many things from the steel factories um, and the stacks. In fact, the, St the Sands Casino has, um, you know, found a place up there and they built a beautiful casino. However, there's a lot of the stacks still there as part of the, the building. So that was really interesting to see. And, and it's a nice uh, you know, a, a booster there. Um, so we drove down the streets and you'll see that as we go to different buildings. I love them. They're, they're just absolutely beautiful. They're still standing. How well made everything was is phenomenal. And they also for the season, they have the Christmas mark again, as you'll see. And at nighttime, the stacks are lit up so beautiful in in front there's a large walkway and from what I understand that walkway is going to extend now from the stacks to the casinos which is not that it, it's a little bit of a hike but apparently it's something that they're looking into and it started but when you go up on the stairs as you'll see you you go up and you can walk all along it and it's pretty fascinating just uh, what's going on here and to be able to look back in history um i do have some things you know notes here on it and i can read um as they said rather than demolish the historic mill or walk away and let it just fall apart the community railed around the plant working hard to bring new life to it and as i said they're Doing so many things there. I have the glass blowing that I'm going to be showing you um, probably after this because when we first got there, we kind of drove around to see what was going on. And then we had um, already booked the glass blowing, which was great that we did because we found out when we got there, it was all, it was booked for the next couple of days. And then we're also doing the tours. And I have a little bit of that too, because um, that woman was great the tour guide, giving it a history and a breakdown. But as we go through um, the video, you, you, again, I'm not doing a play-by-play, -play, and I apologize for that. I'm an amateur at this, and that's it. So in 1863, the Bethlehem Iron Company originally founded um, as the Iron uh, Siconia Iron Company in 1857. opens on the site that I'm showing you here. And makes the first iron rails for the local railroad. 1873, the first steel for um, steel rails is produced at this site. Go on to 1899, the Bethlehem Steel Company is established. 1904, Bethlehem Steel Corporation is officially formed. 1916, Bethlehem Steel becomes the nation's number two steel manufacturer in the U.S., and in 1930, the Chrysler Building in New York, which was the world's tallest building for 11 months, was completed. And Bethlehem Steel's wide flange beams developed two decades earlier made the skyscraper era possible. 
1937, the Golden Gate Bridge was completed, and Bethlehem Steel is a huge part with 83 tons of steel. And then in 1943, during World War II, more than 31,000 people, an all-time high, work at the Bethlehem plant. So you can see the significance, not just in Bethlehem's history, but also how it touched the rest of the United States. So um, there's going to be some areas here that I'm quiet and uh, maybe play a little music, not sure yet. But that overall gives you um, a little bit of the background, the history, and what they took and made there instead of just sitting there was phenomenal. And it's really cool. It's a good place. Well, hey everyone, this is our glass blowing and you got me there. However, my video got cut off, so you just had me in the beginning and I videoed my son all the way through, which you see right here. And um, I'm going to take you through with him. It'll make it uh, where I had the hindsight of what was going on. It would have been fun to have me uh, video on since uh, I'm the host here, but no problem. I'll be the narrator. And uh, as you can see, um, the gentleman here, I'll tell you, he was really, he was good with everybody. You know, my son being a teenager and my, my mother being older, uh, he was really good with what he did. You can see he was an expert and he loved what he did. Uh, it was not an easy job, I'll tell you. They must have been, you know, hot and, and the pipe and the glass was heavy and trying to keep everything sturdy. What he has here is uh, the pipe that they use to use um, in a kettle there. It's all melted glass and the pipe goes in and they twirl it around and take the glass and they, they form it. And there's certain ways you have to hold um, the whole piping. You have to keep it leveled so it doesn't drip because everything starts kind of moving like a, obviously like a very hot fluid. So you're constantly manipulating and moving it the way you want it to form and do. And here what my son's doing is um, he's taking the colors that we chose beforehand and you just kind of pat and dip and, cat, and you keep moving it because as you can see, it, it starts moving. So you're constantly trying to keep the shape of the glass as it's going, as you're, you know, doing your magnificence with it, with making colors or shapes and designs. And that's what he's doing here. The gentleman showing him exactly how to maneuver it to get the first layer um, of the design. So you go back and forth to the kill or the kettle, whatever you want to. You know, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I'm messing it up here. And you go back and forth. So it steps and you do something and you go back and you're forming it's it's really it's really cool, and and that is so hot. Been standing there, I can't imagine being in front of that eight or ten hours a day, back and forth with the heaviness and keeping it straight and being by the heat, because you have people there helping you. But if you're doing this by yourself, you're you got other things um, you have to be doing at the same time while you're trying to concentrate on your product here. So this is the you know the next step on doing the color. They have different colors you can pick from. Um, the stones are different textures and sizes. And it was really neat to learn to do this and, and know that somebody back from in Italy where this started, you know, so long ago to learn that and how they, um, they did things. It, it's just a phenomenal thing. It really is to be a part of it and to appreciate, to, to, to just appreciate what they did and how they lived. I mean, we are just so freaking spoiled now. Everything just comes to us. And I have to tell you what a, a new appreciation for uh, glass blowing. And I pull up something here 
The modern art of glass blowing uses much modern equipment. Um, but the, the essence of working with glass remains an ancient art. Molding red hot liquid glass to create a lasting glass artifacts is an act that requires a creative mind, very hard work, and stamina. It is very physical, draining work, and as I said, it absolutely was. Throughout history, glass blowers were literally held hostage for fear of their knowledge being leaked. During the first century AD, the glass workers were forbidden from traveling, although those who escaped um, spread the art from present day Switzerland, France, and Belgium. Uh, however, leaving the island of Murano was a crime punished by death. So I can't see them doing death because um, they needed them. However, that's what they did. The 16th century was the oldest known uh, glass vessel fragments were created during this period. I believe that went back from Italy, um, Greece, China, and North um, Tyrol. Um, and that's the 16th century, um, 500 BC, glass vessel production, that's where it began, on the Italian peninsula um, at the start of the Roman Republic. So it does go that far back, as you can see, you know, before Christ. Um, uh, what a trade, though. What a beautiful art. What a beautiful trade. Because as you can see, my son here, now he's going into the part where they're forming it. And that's um, actually a heavy metal in, dipped in a water. And it cools it down and it forms it at the same time because... It's just, it's it's weird how from the time it's real hot to it starts cooling down, it gets its own form. So you're constantly manipulating it. So the gentleman puts it back in now. And the lady there, she's um, starting to get um, my son set up where he's going to blow into the glass. And which is really cool because when you get your glass ornament in the mail, you'll see them at the end of this video, what they end up looking like. But, um... It's kind of cool because it's yours. You created it and your air's in there. You blew your air in there to make that. So there's a, there's a lot of creativity going on this and a lot of personal touch to it. So he brings it back out now. And now my, the lady has my son set up to um, get ready to um, take a, the position there. Where uh, you can see how he's constantly looking at it, like I was saying, they're looking at it. We, you can start seeing the form taking place of what it's going to become. So the end there that they're looking at is the, the glass um, Christmas ornament that it's going to turn into, and he constantly is trying to keep going and you know making that shape form. And uh, he has the eye for it. He's you know he's has a degree in the glass blowing and the history of it. Um, so he knows what he's looking for. It's not like you and I can just jump in there now and do this. So they, uh, blew, you know, some air into the, uh, glass and in this part here, he takes over because you constantly got to keep it moving. You know, he shows you your different hand placements, but here now they're keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. And, um, it, it's neat. He's doing all the finishing here. And um, the finishing, the harding, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really cool to be a part of it and, and see it and, you know, just uh, marvel back at where we've evolved from. But there's nothing like hands-on. There really isn't. My son enjoyed himself. My mother, she loved it, and, and I myself. So you can see all the different age groups. So they put it up there now and they give my son this little bat. And what it does is just that little hit releases the pole that they created it from to sit on that stand. And this is so cool here because he takes additional hot glass like that and is able to take the different tools that he has and manipulates. And he pulls and he pulls and he pulls. And then he makes a little hook that essentially ends up the hook that you um, hook the little thing, little metals that we have now to put our ornaments on a Christmas tree. And as you can see, I zoom in here to show you how he handles the tools, clips it, 
And um, it's just a phenomenal thing the way. And then they have to sit it in there. It actually sits in there for almost a day. They ship it to us. We didn't pick it up. And they're selling me um, with the glasses again. But um, I already I did this clip in the beginning. Unfortunately, it gets lost for me. of this building for an important reason and it was on this site where the first log building was built here in 1741 they say pretty much where the parking lot area is and this is an etching of what it looked like and uh stood till about 1823 then they decided they had to actually uh, demolish it it was in the way of the stable and the livery for the first hotel that was going up here the eagle hotel this hotel goes back to the 1920s um it was a project of the bethlehem steel company at that time, a showpiece um, hotel for people coming to do business um, with a steel company. Well, um, this structure um, was the first one for those original 14 people. The second, much larger building was begun shortly after that. And then there's an important connection between those first two buildings here. On um, Christmas Eve, 1741, um, they were gathered in the second building, which was partially done, and Count Zinzendorf, who I mentioned, he had actually arrived here in time with his traveling party for the first Christmas Eve service. So while they were singing hymns in that second building, the Count rose in motion for everybody to follow him, he led them a short distance through the snow into the stable side of that first house. And they got to a particular hymn, Jesu Rufa Me, Jesus Call Thou Me. And they got to the second verse which says, Nick Jerusalem Zonder Bethlehem, not Jerusalem, lowly Bethlehem. And it continues, "'Twas that gave us Christ to save us." It was then that the Count officially christened the town Bethlehem. So that's how the... So after our wonderful tour guide explains how Bethlehem gets its name, we, um... go a little bit further down the streets to find these wonderful buildings I, I can't tell you enough just how gorgeous they are and it, it, they're still standing I mean if we even built our properties like this nowadays you probably wouldn't be able to knock them down she gives us a lot of information tells us how the men and women are um, separated and um, just all kinds of uh, wonderful historic information and I, I found it very interesting that the um, people treated each other very equal. And you have people coming from all over the place. There wasn't much of like surrogating or anything like that. Um, they all worked together in the efforts of building a community that they could count on and um, flourish in. Mainly, um, the Moravians are German descent. And as you can see, it's a, a beautiful area. Um, the buildings are gorgeous. The history is wonderful. And the town really um, is still standing well. So we just go through the buildings, the history, and I wanted to bring this to you again for balancing active life to be balanced and be a part of something and learn things. They bring us at the end to um, the graveyard where people are buried from the 1700s through. They didn't live long. A lot of that was due to uh, different disease and um, I think a lot of it was also climate. 40 to 45 years was the gravestones that I saw that they lived the longest. But it was truly a great trip, and I hope it's something that you can take your family or when you go somewhere, enjoy your family, be in the moment, learn something new, and over and out here at the Balancing Act of Life. We appreciate you, and I appreciate TLB for letting me bring this to you.